What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast. Today we're checking back in on the Risk of Rain 1.0 release. Make no mistake about it, this is one of my favorite games like ever. Seriously, it's that good. I really, really like this game and as far as roguelites go, it's really good. I haven't played now in about two or three months. It's been a little bit, so I apologize if my memory is fuzzy about what some of the items or what some of the characters or what some of the abilities do. But this is one of those games that I routinely come back to like Mountain Blade Warband and dump like a lot of hours into. Probably every six months or so I come back and just disappear into this game. So let's go ahead and start on off. There's a few things that I don't have unlocked yet. I haven't unlocked this dude yet. I think he's, this guy's the commando, right? Yeah, I haven't unlocked the mercenary yet. I haven't unlocked, this is like a little bug guy. There's like a little plant guy too. Like I haven't unlocked all of them yet because you gotta do very specific things in order to get some of these done. Like so for this guy right here, you gotta wear you gotta wear a fuel pod on your back the entire game. And if you get if you get shot too much, it blows up and then you can't turn this in. And I just haven't managed to pull it off yet. Anyways, the characters that I do have unlocked. I have the commando. I have the Huntress, who is my favorite. I love the Huntress. Uh, I have Multi, who I'm not a big fan of. Don't play him very much. I have the Engineer. He's okay. He's not my favorite, but he's okay. Uh, and then we also have the Artificer. Uh, the last time I played the game, the Artificer was kind of busted and was not very good. Like, I know that the developers back... I played this probably six months ago, and I know the developers had mentioned something about wanting to fiddle with the Artificer, and I don't know if it's been done yet or whatever. But I do like the Artificer, but the, I, I remember having the feeling that the Artificer was not as strong as I would have liked her to be. Uh, and then there's also the Loader. Uh, the Loader is kind of, like, really, really interesting because he punches stuff. Like, he doesn't really use guns or anything. Uh, I'll probably go with Huntress, since she's my favorite. I think the last Last time we played the game, we played Huntress 2, so I apologize about that if you didn't want to see Huntress gameplay, but it is what it is. I just, I really like Huntress. You know, you find the character in this game that you like, and you play it, because it's the one that gives you results. Uh, the Huntress, so she's got some abilities. We can teleport. Uh, we have an arrow rain that we can fire at things. Uh, we can fire normal arrows at stuff, and then also we have our right click, but we don't have any enemies around right now. We're, we're, there we go. I need... Yeah, exactly. It's a little spinny disc thing. That's all you need to know about it. It bounces in between enemies, does a bunch of damage. It's actually probably one of the best right mouse click attacks in the game, in my opinion. It's very, very good and very, very helpful. Uh, yeah, before we get surrounded, let me just go ahead and fall back over to here. We'll throw out some damage right there. Sounds good to me. There's a chest right here. We're definitely going to want to use that. Avoid getting hit right there if I can. It looks like I think this thing is the monster tooth peasant. Yeah, it gives you a healing orb every single time you kill something. All right, well, not the greatest item. What I'm looking for in the beginning is anything that increases our first shot damage. Uh, so there are items that, for example, on the first hit on an enemy, when they have full health, will deal extra damage. Huntress stacks very well with stuff like that. And if you're trying to get a god run going, you're definitely going to want something like that along the way, too. Go ahead and take you out real fast. I've got enough money for another chest. We need to keep looking around and see if we can find anything good around here. So I'm going to stay on my sprint. Uh, I didn't have time right there to pull out the old pull out the old teleport right before you hit the ground. But, you know, maybe someday. Two chests on this side. What's inside this one? Uh, it looks like we got a pauldron. Yeah, the repulsion armor plate. It's not bad. It's not the best item ever, but it's not bad. Uh, basically, it gives you a flat percentage reduction of damage that comes through. And so if you can stack a couple of them, definitely a worthwhile item. But with just one of them, eh. Uh, med kit, that's going to make us get a heal whenever we get hit by anything. So we take a large source of damage. Uh, it's going to put a heal over time effect on us. Let's go ahead and we're going to have a look over here and kind of see what's inside this vending machine. Anything good over here? What do we have? Uh, we've got the goat hoof, actually. I definitely want that. That makes my sprint faster. That's one of those must-have items for a really good game. You kind of need it. And so I'm going to pick that up sight unseen every single time that I find one. Uh, there will be no debate. I'll just pick it up on the spot. There we go. We'll grab that. There's another chest over here, too. It looks like we have a gambling shrine on this side. I will more than likely use that in just a minute. Looks like we got the old guillotine, which means we can instantly kill low health elite monsters. I don't know if that's a new item or not. I don't recall that one being a thing the last time I played the game. But then again, you guys know me, my memory is not what it used to be. And frankly, it was always a bit touch and go. Like, I never had, like, a good memory. But over the years, it continues to get worse, so, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, throw that out right there, I guess. Uh, we'll probably do something like that right there. That's the really nice thing about her ability, is that it's also kind of a dodge. 
uh, because it allows her to teleport. I do recommend using it as a dodge whenever you can. I was kind of late on that one, and I feel bad about it, but I'm going to point it out. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the goat hoof over here. There we go. All right, so the goat hoof is going to make us sprint faster. You will note that our land speed goes up pretty considerably. If you can stack up four or five of those, oof, you're going to be moving pretty quick. And therein really lies the majesty of what I really, really like about Risk of Rain 2. I like Risk of Rain 2 a lot more than Risk of Rain 1. I, I feel like with Risk of Rain 2, they really improved upon a lot of the aspects of Risk of Rain 1 that were kind of like, eh. I don't know. Like, I, honestly, I just love the fact that it's 3D. I've never been a big platforming guy. I grew up during a time period where literally every video game was a platformer. And for that reason, I don't like platformers. I don't tend to feature them. I don't tend to have them on my channel. And they're like, eh. Shrine of Chance. We got the gasoline. Not bad. We got some gla- Oh my god. We may have just gotten the best gambling shrine ever. Those are two. I mean, the gas can is okay. But the glasses are incredible. So, like, you want to have a lot of glasses if you're going to be playing the game. I don't know what I just threw that ability at, but I get the feeling it didn't hit. There we go. Now we're looking good. Okay, so let me head off down... Head off down the... It looks like there's a lunar shrine right there. We need to figure out where the teleporter is because that's the ultimate goal of the game is you got to find the teleporter, go through the teleporter, and go to the next level. And we're actually kind of burning daylight right now, and I don't want to get myself into trouble. I will take that, I guess. Hey, teddy bear. Hell yeah. So the teddy bear is another must-have item. Uh, the teddy bear gives you a flat percentage chance to negate all damage every time you take a hit. And so if you've got like... You know, eight or nine of those things, your chance to take a hit is pretty low. And, and honestly, once you get to the point in the game where, like, everything one-shots you, that might be the only chance you have to survive. So just something to keep in mind. Disposable missile launcher right there. Not a bad active item. I'll take it. I'm going to activate that real fast, too, before I waste too much time here. I don't know if we picked up every item that I want. But we did pick up some decent stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get him real fast with the rocket launcher. I would like that to happen right there. He's going to try to laser us. We're going to need cover. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. I, I would like to light him on fire if I can. What is that thing? Hold on. Is that a new thing? What is that? What is it and why is it shooting at me? I'm not familiar with what that big rocky glowing thing is. I mean, it looks like it takes damage good enough, so not that worried about it, I guess. I don't know. We, we buried that dude pretty quick, so I'm not really that worried about the efficacy of our run right now. We have a pretty good first run going at the moment. I'm pretty happy with it. What did he drop? What is this right here? The death mark. Enemies with four or more debuffs are marked for death. Eh. Not the best thing I could have picked up off of him. Eh. Like, the death mark is cool, but the death mark now necessitates that our build has, like, a lot of debuffs in it. Which means that, like, it's going to force me to take items that are not necessarily that good for my build in order to assuage the, the cruel whims of the death mark. And so, oh, yeah, I got to be inside the teleporter zone. I forgot about that. There we go. I'm just going to keep farming and leveling up while we wait. We've probably got, like, another minute or so until this thing's done anyways. Actually, no, we probably got about like a half minute. It'll be okay. There you go. Knock a couple of those guys out. We'll go straight on through the teleporter. Really no reason to use my rocket launcher, no matter how much I'd like to. All right, straight through. We did pretty good this time around. Got ourselves some level ups, increased our HP, had a good time, fired some arrows, played Huntress. I didn't get up onto that top layer over there. I'm a little bit worried that maybe there was some stuff up there that I missed out on. But we did make... Well, okay, we didn't make great time on that first level. This game is a bit of a speed run as well. Uh, just something to keep in mind. I'm going to need some money. So if anybody wants to fight me, I will oblige you. I will oblige you if you wish to fight me. 15 bucks right there. I don't really see any enemies coming around to kind of cause problems. Hmm. All right. Oh, throw that out there. Kill a couple of you guys. We got two fires on him, which is pretty good. Definitely take that. Uh, drop that right there just to get some damage off, I suppose. We got a little bit of cash flowing because we're going to need it. All right. This guy is in a blocked position, which is not that great, so I'm not going to activate him. He will come with us when we go to the next level, so that's kind of nice. 
Uh, nothing from the shrine, which is a bummer. Anything here? 54. Let's go find the items that are 100% gonna give me something before I do anything else. Watch out for, uh, watch out for those little jellyfish right there. These guys are a, a prime candidate for wiping me. They wipe me all the time. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. Perfect example. I need money. Here, we'll activate you because you'll go to the next level with me. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I can't leave a robot behind. All right? I'm just, I'm a sucker for the automatons. I like them. I think they're rad. And I think that, you know, when the singularity happens and it turns out that a really, really... I've got a feeling that when the singularity happens, the AI is not going to be the nicest guy. And I think that our best shot is in aiding it to arrive so that it does not spite us once it finally does arrive, right? Like I believe that's called Roko's Basilisk. It's a little thought experiment that posits that any perfect AI will know who helped it rise and who helped it exist and will punish everybody else that did not help it come into existence. So, it is in our best interest to kind of all get on board with creating the AI so that we don't end up getting, you know, mercilessly annihilated by some Terminator-style monster. Yeah, I'm just gonna go this way. You guys can stay back here and do what you're gonna do. Another turret, huh? All right, well, I guess we've got another turret now. Farm away, my little turrety friend. What do we have going on here? What are you, like a bell? I don't know what you are. I, I, I think what you should be is a corpse, though, so I'm going to do my best to make that happen. You over there, we got another equipment stash. I kind of like the missile launcher. The super massive leech. What does a super massive leech do? Hold on, what do you do? Heal for a percentage of the damage you deal for eight seconds. Oh, that's kind of good. I actually really, really like that. That's kind of like a nice oh shit button. And I, I find that when I play games like this, having kind of like a parachute you can pull the ripcord on is usually a good idea. Another guillotine. I'll probably get whatever that is right there. The bandolier. There we go. Perfect. It resets our school, our skill cooldowns. Bandolier is pretty good, especially if you get like one of the things that allows you to have multiple charges of your special abilities. That means that like you can instantly, basically, just be spamming abilities all the time, which is pretty rotten. In all honesty, towards the enemy, it's great for me. Rotten for them. They have an awful day when I have that stuff. Dude, this music like reminds me of all of like the crazy King Crimson type music, like Prague, I guess. What is this over here? Heal all allies after standing still for two seconds. I'm playing alone, so it's not really that helpful. I know what you're saying. Can I play this with my friends now that I've seen that item? You can indeed. You can play this game with your friend Arenos, provided that you have that equipment. Uh, there is our teleporter. There is our teleportate. So, what's that, an energy drink? Energy drink, what does energy drink do? I don't remember. Aw, oh, dude, it ate my goat leg. Sprint faster. Okay, so it basically does the same thing that the goat leg does. Not that big of a deal. Although the goat leg might be universal movement. I don't remember. It's been a while. I had all these items memorized when I was, like, hard into this game. But I've been taking a couple month break while I waited for 1.0 to come out, so here we are. Stun grenade. I don't mind that. Stun grenades are cool. Yep, just keep throwing that thing. I find that Huntress stacks especially well with the Bandolier. That's just been my experience in the past, is that Huntress and Bandolier go together very, very well. Because she tends to have like harder hitting abilities that have longer cooldowns. And so getting those instantly reset compared to the people that have their cooldowns up every like three to four seconds, uh, it, it helps more. Uh, I think she scales well with it. Machine gun, cover me. I gotta go back to the gambling shrine and give it all my money for extra items. There we go. Ooh! The happiest mask. A chance. That's actually really, really good. Red items are rare. Like, rare, rare, rare. Like, red items are the items that define your run. Like, those are the ones that you build around. So, apparently, this thing gives me ghosts whenever I kill an enemy. And chances are, because it's a rare pickup, it probably procs pretty often. If you don't know what proc means, it means programmed random occurrence. Effectively, if you have an ability in a video game that, let's say, has a 10% chance to go off, and then it goes off, it procced. 
I always have to explain that terminology to people that may not have played as much World of Warcraft or anything else. Another bandolier, very nice. I mean, it's not one of the great stacking items, I don't think, but... Hey, there's one of our ghosts, very nice. Let me see if there's a few more items hiding around here before we push on through. Honestly, you don't need to rush yourself if you're having a good run and you're able to deal a lot of damage. You only really need to rush yourself if you're having a bad run. That's my general rule anyways. Yeah, it looks like there's another trade terminal over there. Shrine of Chance got us. There we go. Hey, armor piercing bullets. Those make us hit the bosses harder. And there's a trade thing up there, but I'm going to go over this way real fast. We're going to see if there's enough money inside of this little capsule to help me out for a minute. I mean, you can spawn in front of me if you want to. I don't know if that's the best idea ever, but do what thou wilt. Hopefully we can respawn one of these guys as one of our pets. If we can get the elites to help us out and have an elite ghost, that'd probably be a really good thing for us. A little bit of money inside there. Probably enough for us to finish off the gambling shrine. I, I think the gambling shrine is the last objective that I'm going to go for. And once we've got that settled, I think we'll probably... Hey. Not that great. Monster Tooth, not that helpful. I don't think the Monster Tooth stacks at all, so I think it's just a wasted item. Kind of a bummer, but then again, life is kind of a bummer. <laughs> uh, let's go back over this way, and I actually need my teleport to be up. Please recharge faster, teleport. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's see what's inside this vendor on my way back. We've got a... I don't remember... I think the meat was good, but I don't recall. Regenerate health after killing an enemy. Yeah, we got healing options now. That's really, really good. Okay, so we have a great many items at the moment that are allowing us to heal in between, like, hits and combat and everything else. I think there's not too much to worry about there. Let's go ahead and swing around this way. We're going to go ahead and activate the teleporter. We're going to kill as many bad guys as we can, and then we'll see what's in store for us in the next level. Is this the right way? Did I take a good turn here? I took a bad turn. I knew it. So you might be asking yourself, like, what is it that you like so much about this game? Like, why are, you, why are you such a firm proponent of it? Why do you think it's a good game? Well, every run is different. I mean, this game has the same thing going for it that The Binding of Isaac does. It's got a very diverse roster of items, but not so diverse that it's hard to get the things that you want. They've really, like, done a good job. I don't remember what this guy does, but I know it's probably not good for me. Uh, don't worry about leaving the circle if you have to. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, I'm not too worried about activating the teleporter until I kill this guy off. Yeah, let's maybe get rid of that, possibly. Ow, dude. Okay, I've been smacked. Not great. Not great. Don't like being smacked. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw out some damage here. I think I need to be behind a rock for this guy, if I remember correctly. It does, like, a, a massive, crazy, explode-the-world AoE that, like, annihilates everything. If I remember right, anyways. Yeah, there it is right there. So we want to break line of sight here. And we need to be behind this. Otherwise, we're going to die, like, really, really horribly. Uh, this boss is actually really, really bad. If you get this boss in, like, a weird area where there is no cover, uh, you'll get toasted pretty fast. I also like the fact... So back to what I was talking about previously. I also, I also like the fact that this game is not afraid to let the player be powerful. Uh, that's something that I've touched up on a lot in past videos and in past streams. But... I do well and truly believe that too many games are really, really afraid of allowing, like, kind of gamers to live out like a power fantasy and allowing the gamer to become overpowered and just see how far that takes them if they have, like, a really good build. Like, obviously, if it's a competitive game, you don't want to give into that and you don't want to focus on that too much because the game needs to be fair. But in a single player game like this, allowing the player to be powerful and wreck the entire screen with explosions and stuff like that can be tremendously fun and cathartic, especially if they put a plan in motion to get to that level of efficiency and it paid off, you know, through risks and reward and whatnot. And Risk of Rain 2 is one of those games that really has that fine-tuned. Like, I'm not saying that you're never going to have bad runs in this game, because you definitely are going to have bad runs. You know, there's runs that I reset after the first level because it's just not worth it to carry it through. But 
with random roguelites, I find that that happens a lot more with other games than Rain or Risk of Rain 2. I usually find that I can pull it together in Risk of Rain 2, uh, regardless of what they've given me in the first couple levels. Let's go to the next level. Right now, we have a really good build going, though. This build is going to be... This build is going to be hyped. Uh, I think this build is going to carry. We still haven't gotten that item, uh, the... We didn't get the item that makes our first hit on any undamaged enemy deal more damage, which is a must-have. That and attack speed are, are the two that you have to have on Huntress. We haven't gotten that yet, which makes me a little bit nervous. But my hope is that we'll get there. I think we have a solid enough foundation right now that we can play around and sort of gamble if we need to. Just sort of see what happens. Donate at the Newt Altar. I don't know. I don't really have that much going for me right now. I don't know if I want to. I think the Newt Altar is the one that allows you to go to the store. You get the blue portal after you complete this level. But I don't think I have any currency to really spend, so I'm sort of on the fence about whether or not it's a great idea. Uh, one lunar. Yeah, sure, why not? I'm gonna need you guys to chill. I'm gonna need you guys to chill. You guys are kind of running me off my spot right now. It's unfortunate because I like that spot. A little bit more cash. Perfect. Just wanted a little bit more spending money. Something I can fiddle around with over cheer. We need 250. Hey, we got the sticky bomb. I call it the maraca, but it's a sticky bomb. Every time you hit something, it has a chance to put a bomb on them that AOEs. It's better on characters that fire. It's better on characters that have rapid fire. Our attacks are a little bit slow to fully benefit from Sticky Bomb. Still, Sticky Bomb I will not turn down. Like, Sticky Bomb is still solid. I I'll take that over some of the other picks you can accidentally get randomly. Dude, are you coming over here? I need money. Like, can you come over here, please? I just want to murder you in the face. That's all that I want. It's not personal. It's just that I really, really don't like you for who you are. Probably a waste of my buzzsaw. Yeah, there you go. Stand there in the middle of my AOE. Exactly. Not super happy. Oh, no. It's one of those dudes. Those dudes are dangerous. Those dudes get you into all kinds of trouble. Trust me. Yeah. These guys are a problem. These dudes deal a lot of damage. I don't remember what the Opus does. What does the Opus do? I'm gonna have to pick it up and find out. I remember I've had it, but what is this? You and all of your allies go into a frenzy. Dude, I think we have enough healing options. I don't think we need the healing leech. I'll get something that aids our DPS a little bit because I do feel as though our DPS has been somewhat lacking. Like, I don't think we've picked up Quite enough utilities to help us hit as hard as I would like to hit right now. Oh, there's stores and stuff over there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys are bogging me down right now. Give me a second. Just give me a minute. I got to peruse. Uh, we've got a, another energy drink over here. I think energy drink is hands down the winner. We've got a banner. One banner is good. Like, one banner is cool, but definitely don't spend your time building up to have, like, a whole bunch of banners, okay? A whole bunch of banners, not going to help you out, like, at all. There you go. Get a little bit of fire on these bitches. There we go. A little, little bit of fire on them. Yep. Uh, what the banner does is every time I level up, it drops a banner on the ground that increases my attack speed and increases my damage and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's a pretty sweet item. Uh, it's not like a priority item because you can't really control where you level up unless you are just way better at micromanaging than I am. But if you can get it to drop like around a boss or something like that, it can be helpful. Uh, ooh, a ukulele. I need that. Oh, dude, I hit it too soon. We got the meat. The meat is no good. Well, meat's okay. But still, I need the ukulele. Uh, the ukulele, it makes you shoot chain lightning. And the chain lightning is revoltingly efficient at killing enemies. It's like really, really good. Ukulele and glasses. 
and like goat's hoof are like the ones that are like must have items for any run in my opinion. Oh look, it's you again. I don't like you very much. You upset me. You just have too much HP, mine friend. Too much HP. Uh, was there anything back here? Let me let me check these lower. I gotta take. You gotta take your time on these levels because there's like multiple layers. It's like nested bowls almost, and so like you gotta check like every single layer for the loot. Otherwise, you're not gonna secure the bag, man. And you gotta secure the bag. That's how you have a good run that just goes on forever to the point where you don't even feel like playing anymore. You're so good at the game, you know. Like it's just it's part of Risk of Rain is trying to get those god runs. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything down here, so this was probably a giant waste of my time. I'm gonna keep going over to this side, but we're sort of running out of time for the day, too. It's kind of a bummer, because I'm having a really good time right now. Uh, my name is Splattercat. This is Risk of Rain Dose. Hope you guys like it. I love this game. I think this game is fantastic. I stream it infrequently on Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming, so definitely swing through and check that out. I also have a, you know, I also have a Discord where my community hangs out, so you can check that out. Um, I would love to have you and be your host there. If you wanted to get this game for yourself, I cannot recommend it highly enough. I really do think this game is a fantastic roguelite. Like, one of the best roguelites, in my opinion. And so anyways, I'll have a link for you down below so that you can check that out. Take care, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow with some hot and fresh off the indie skillet.